Hello hackers! Welcome to Bone College. I'm Jan and today we're going to talk about what to do next. So you've taken the course, maybe it is a you're taking it for credit, maybe you're here just for fun. Um, you're hooked. You like this stuff. What next? All right, first let's talk about learning and then let's talk about uh, making a living with this stuff. So uh, the best way to keep learning of course, if you haven't finished everything on the whole Pwn College platform is to keep going. Um, if you have, or if you feel comfortable enough to start this, it is capture the flag exercises. So capture the flag is a uh, competition format where uh, awesome hackers around the world every weekend host an awesome uh, event or two to uh, challenge other hackers to, to hack through uh, creative programs made by the organizing team. Um, this is by far, by far, by far, by far the best way to develop the skills that um, to further develop, to refine and to perfect the skills that you've picked up over the course of uh, your journey through Pwn College or through any other uh, security education methodology that you've been using. Uh, CTFs will take the knowledge that's kind of sitting in your brain, they'll perfect it, they will give you the ability by forcing it into your mind to pick up things very quickly, um, to adapt to different uh, security situations, and to build up a reputation in the community that will then help you create a, uh, develop a career in cybersecurity. Um, these events can be kind of crazy. There's a list of, uh, of practice um, kind of war games, offline CTFs that I maintain. Let me pause this stream real quick to fix this slide because there is an actual URL now. One second, boom. So um, at War Game Nexus is a list of uh, offline uh, kind of CTF style security challenges I maintain. If you're ready to start in on live competition, ctftime.org will list for every weekend a CTF. And on the Pwn College Discord server, there are constantly groups of people looking for friends to CTF with. This is a team sport um, and it's awesome having a team that can help you learn and, and, and push you forward. Um, as a bonus, if you reach a certain point at Pwn College, this changes sometimes, currently it's green belt or higher, or certain hollowed uh, positions in other education platforms, we will invite you to ASU's CTF Academy, uh, invite only CTF team for people that are ready from a technical perspective to dive into high level hacking in CTFs, um, and we will help mentor you throughout your CTF journey as you move forward toward the World Championship of Hacking, the Olympics of Hacking, DEF CON CTF. DEF CON takes place every year in Las Vegas. Of course, during COVID, it was briefly virtual. Once upon a time, I hosted DEF CON with colleagues at ASU. Um, it was an incredible experience to create the competition for the top hackers. Now, um, we're back to playing DEF CON and others have taken on hosting, the organizers rotate um, every four years about. Um, and it's an awesome, super high stakes, super high pressure, super incredible security knowledge uh, concepts. Uh, now I'm just kind of babbling, but it's an awesome competition. Um, you have to qualify for this competition through qualifier events, but it's all very approachable. Honestly, if you keep pushing, go through a bunch of CTFs, get a good team together, join the CTF Academy, etc. You can make it to the world championship and spend 72 hours or so uh, basically sitting there staring at your computer as the world's hacking community walks past you and wonders, what the hell are they doing? This is a screenshot from uh, one of the times I hosted um, possibly my favorite year. Um, you know, it was a, a different world, pre-COVID, fun stuff. Um, awesome. So you've uh, learned all this, this stuff through CTFs, et cetera, et cetera. How else can you learn? Well, you can 
actually start analyzing real software by tackling bug bounty programs. Uh, a whole bunch of vendors of software, um, creators of websites, uh, creators of web services, they want the hacker community to work with them instead of against them. And so what did they do? They created this concept called bug bounties. Um, with bug bounty programs, you can basically get permission to analyze the software services, et cetera, et cetera, of various uh, uh, vendors to find bugs in their stuff, to hack them, to show them how you did it, to disclose it to them instead of anyone else, and to get awards. This is also a great way to make money if you are very good at it. Uh, awards vary, this shifts all the time, but there are times when like the, the, the top bug bounty amount, if you get a you know uh, zero click, uh, exploit for a, for an iPhone that has persistence, blah, 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 you can probably get, well, you can definitely get over a million dollars for it from Apple. Um, and it varies every once in a while. Google raises their limit. Google lowers their limit. Apple raises, lowers, et cetera, et cetera. But, but there are people that make a living off of this, uh, including some of my friends. It's, it's very viable, viable thing. But it's also a great way to learn. Now, let's say you are um, applying your knowledge to a random open source project, not even a bug bounty, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and you find a bug in it. You play around and you're like, okay, this bug is actually exploitable. This is wild. What do you do? And you'll run into this in the, in the, in the, in the course of learning. I, I just, uh, before recording this video, was advising someone from the Porn College community who did this exactly this, found a bug and was asking, what do I do with it? Well, you have three options and one of them is the correct answer. One option, which is not the correct answer anymore, you drop it on social media and you say, hey, look everybody, I found this amazing bug in whatever and you can use it to hack all your friends. Boom, here's the exploit. Uh, this used to be not too uncommon. People would do this to uh, build up hype, to uh, build up their own reputation as a badass hacker. Uh, nowadays, it's considered to be bad form. What, what happens when you just drop a zero day like this on the internet is you um, endanger a lot of people. There, there are people that can actually be physically endangered by exploits, depending on where they live and what's going on. You uh, ruin a lot of people's weekends, right? You drop a zero day on Friday, suddenly a lot of system administrators have to make sure that they're patching software all weekend. And it's, it's just, just a generally a, a, not a very nice thing to do nowadays. You're also inviting uh, a lot of legal repercussions because companies that you disclose vulnerabilities, uh, that you, companies whose products you disclose vulnerabilities in can sue you. Um, so that's, uh, you know, one thing. So then, um, uh, the second option, you can do what's called responsible disclosure. You can go and, and give it to the company, email them security at microsoft.com or whatever and say, hey, I found this bug. Here's what, how you, you um, uh, trigger it, et cetera, et cetera. And you know, even open source projects now, for example, you find a bug in the Pwn College Dojo, you can go to github.com slash Pwn College slash Dojo, click on security and create a new issue that, you know, privately gets reported to us and we fix it. Generally speaking, these efforts are rewarded with public recognition. For example, an entry in the uh, uh, national vulnerability database called a common vulnerability enumeration number that you receive and you can say, hey, CV 2023975286, I made this, uh, this is mine. Look at how badass I am. Um, and you put that on your resume and it's awesome. Often there's some monetary or other uh, recognition as well. On Pwn College, if you find a bug, we'll give you on the scoreboard, a bug emoji badge that very few people have. Only the people that have truly found security issues um, and reported them responsibly to us. Number three, which is also, oh, uh, if I didn't mention number two is the right answer. Number three, which is also a correct answer, is you can demonstrate it in a legitimate zero day content contest, such as Phone Tools. This is a contest that uh, kind of links up 
the vendors, their software, and the hackers that want to hack them and puts a lot of glam around it. You show up, you walk up on stage and oh, boom, you drop your, your exploit, but you do it in a private way that, that, that uh, people can watch, but they don't get the technical details. And then you disclose the technical details to the vendor and everything gets uh, nicely fixed, et cetera, et cetera. Um, there are, of course, zero day contests of various legitimacy. Some of them uh, are, are more legitimate than others, but some like, you know, phone to own or, or, or uh, these big recognized ones. Uh, it's pretty good. And there's prizes, there's hype, there's fun. Uh, some of my students, for example, sometimes go and, uh, and, and uh, bring cool exploits to phone to own. Now, number four, the wrong answer. You can take this uh, these vulnerabilities and you can sell them to very shady people. You can fly to, I don't know, some nightclub somewhere and start like, like, like in the Matrix and the scene where Neo goes to the nightclub and starts selling. Uh, no, wait, they come to him and he sells them his his exploits. Stuff like that, typically shady. There are non shady versions of this. There are uh, government contractors that do this uh, and and so on. But uh, you know, depending on your view of ethics and your um, uh, kind of morality, your personal morality, uh, number four can be questionable. And depending on how far you go in number four, you can start selling, you know, zero days to criminals on the black market. Uh, it, can, it can be against basically very widely accepted views of ethics. So I would urge you, you find a bug, Stick to number two and three. Number two is great. Number three, also great. Uh, as long as the O'Day contest is legit. But, you know, very few people get into hot water with responsible disclosure, but it's easy to get into hot water as you kind of stray beyond that. Awesome. All right. So, what if you're not ready for all of this? How do you keep learning? Well, hey, if you're an ASU student, you're in luck. ASU is one of the most um, uh, security crazy institutions out there, both on the undergraduate, that's the left of the slide, and the graduate, the right of the slide level. Uh, if you're listening to this, having just finished CSC 365, there's a whole slew of other uh, awesome security classes waiting for you in your undergrad. The one I'll point out is 466. It's basically this content, but even crazier. Uh, you really get a, an understanding of how security works on an entire system, on the, in the kernel, on the CPU level. It gets really crazy and very cool. Highly recommend it. There's also security classes for networking, for um, uh, forensics, for uh, data data security and privacy, and for kind of generally finding bugs in software. So there's a lot of very cool stuff. Highly recommend you check it out. On the graduate side of things, we have a whole lot of very targeted classes in specific topics. For example, you want to learn how to find automatically bugs in large complex software, we have a class for that, uh, applied vulnerability research. You want to really dive in to uh, uh, being able to reverse engineer and debug software, we have a class for that. There's a lot of cool courses. Keep an eye out, graduate curricula is much more evolving and, and, and shifting to follow the, the cutting edge. Um, so either way, there's stuff for you to learn. And then of course, um, if you want to apply this stuff in practice, uh, you can join us. Uh, as in join us in the lab. If you get a belt on Pwn College um, and you're an ASU student, shoot me an email and we will work with you. We'll figure out how to pull you into research um, and we'll uh, do some awesome stuff. If you're not an ASU student and you earn an advanced belt, shoot me an email as well. We, uh, when funding permits, we run uh, apprenticeship programs to pull awesome people in. If you have a green or a blue belt, uh, let me know and we will talk. All right, let's um, put uh, cut the video here because we're at almost 15 minutes. 
and uh, stay tuned for career.